Welcome to this webinar looking into some case studies related to diagnostic ultrasound evaluation of the Achilles tendon. My name is Bernard Matthew, advanced practice physio based in London, UK. So the reason I chose these cases are looking into specific benefit of diagnostic ultrasound in MSK practice. Most of the cases can be managed clinically with a good clinical examination, but there are certain instances where uh, ultrasound is extremely useful, not only for the diagnosis, but also to guide for the management. Now, when we look into tendons, as we know, tendons connect muscle to bone, and they have a unique structure that gives a characteristic sonographic appearance. The tendon is made of bundles of parallel linear fibers and um, high percentage of type 1 collagen. This arranged in this sort of uh, triple helix structure. The orientation is along the long axis of the uh, collagen fibers is on the long axis of the tendon in keeping with the biomechanical strain placed between muscle and bone. On ultrasound, as you can see, uh, this pattern is sort of um, seen as multiple tightly spaced ecogenic parallel lines in a fibular pattern. So that's this ultrasound is a normal um, ultrasound appearance in um, grayscale or, or in a 30 year, year old man showing this parallel ecogenic lines in a fibular pattern that is uniform in size and ecotexture. So and then the star is the calcaneum. So that's sort of one view obviously with um, any tendons it's important to look in both planes both in the long axis as in the short axis now moving on to tendinopathy extremely common presentation in MSK practice and um, when we look into um, tendinosis or tendinopathy what are the options uh, what are the things which we see so when you see an ultrasound, there are some distinct features. One is the enlargement of the tendon, thickened. You get this fo focal hypoepic region, darkened root regions. The tendon loses its normal fibrillar pattern. There might be calcification and there might be also increased vascularity. The hyperechoic fibrillar pattern is lost and um, you can get focal area. So we can see from the photos here of the tendons here you can see this enlargement of the tendon and you're getting uh, areas of focal hypoechoic regions and calcification can sometimes look uh, appear as echogenic reflectors with posterior acoustic shadowing it's always useful to compare it on the contralateral side power doppler is extremely useful so you can see the same tendon here uh, with the small flow which sort of shows increased vascularity, uh, which again sparks, comes under the umbrella of tendinopathy. So with ultrasound, um, it's useful to diagnose. Obviously, tendinopathy is a clinical uh, diagnosis, but ultrasound is useful to confirm and also to know the stage and also the severity, although it might not be linked with the symptoms. So it's part of the sign symptoms and imaging cluster. So looking into tendinopathic changes on ultrasound, you see focal hypoechoic region. So in the previous slide, you can see it's got that nice uh, fibrillar um, bright pattern. That gets lost here and you get this area of darkening uh, um, you know, hypoechoic regions. The um, spaghetti appearance parallel fibers is lost and also it becomes thickened and also increased blood flow. So that is uh, your normal appearance of a tendinopathic appearance which you see in uh, peripheral tendons. And also um, that um, has to be linked up with the clinically. Into cases here so first case study so first is a 48 year old female uh, with a 10 month history of achilles pain the reason for a, 
Referral was a painful lump, left ankle pain affecting walking. She was a keen runner. She stopped running because it's got too painful. No history of trauma. She was not responding to physio, although I was not aware of what exactly she had. Um, so there's a query of cyclist neuropathy, and also whether the patient would be suitable for shockwave therapy, which is quite commonly offered in many parts of the UK for patients with failed neuropathy. So let's look into the patient images here. So apologies, I only have one view. So that's sort of Euraculus along with the power Doppler. So it's always useful to have a checklist so that we cover all the key areas. So the checklist I would deal with somebody with uh, tenopathy would be is first to make sure it's intact, um, no history of trauma, nothing to be of concern here. Is it thickened? Is it a hypoechoic? Has it lost fibula pattern? Is there calcification? Is there vascularity on power Doppler? And also useful to look into associated bursa and always good practice to check the opposite side. So this is sort of is the features you would see with somebody with a chronic tendinopathy. Here you can see uh, it's definitely thick and fusiform. It was around uh, seven millimeters. The normal is around four to five. Um, loss of the fibula pattern. You see that sort of pack uh, structure calcification. There's vascularity on Doppler. There is no sign of bursitis, and also um, always to, good to check. So based on uh, the image findings, I would say the patient has mid-portion achilles tendinopathy, more in the reactive stage. It looks more like acute on chronic. So that would be my um, ultrasound uh, report. Uh, achilles is intact, thickening of the mid-portion of the tendon measuring seven millimeters, demonstrating marked vascularity. There was some calcification which I saw on the transverse view, which measured around one millimeters by two millimeters, and uh, definitely fits with a picture of a reactive mid portion achilles tendinopathy. Now, personally, I would not give shockwave to this patient because this is more on an acute flare up. Uh, it can make it worse, and I would wait for things to settle, try with load management, footwear issues, um, you know, gentle loading, and then if needed, we can look into shockwave. So, it's always useful to to know the stage so generally shockwave therapy in my experience is best done in a more stable patient when there is no signs of active vascularity cm this was referred from a foot and ankle consultant so as you can see here is a 36 year old male runner swelling over uh, right achilles getting painful and unable to run and train it all started after uh, getting a new shoe so fortunately i had access to the update letter from the consultant so this is the letter so patient reports the cystic swelling over the achilles tendon for more than 18 months and no specific injury uh, it's become so painful and uh, uncomfortable he's even struggling with normal shoes for work and he's unable to run and train while the consultant saw him in the clinic, there was a cystic swelling around the insertion, extremely painful to touch. And because of that, he's referred and I saw him in the clinic. So, what were the images? So, when I looked at the patient here, it's quite an interesting presentation here. So, as you can see here, first thing is uh, there is a cystic swelling. Um, it's a well-defined hypoechoic um, lesion sort of superficial to the achilles tendon the tendon itself looks healthy um, the lesion seems to be separate from the achilles peritoneum and uh, this could be the area where possibly the shoes were rubbing and uh, highly suggestive of adventitious bursa which is caused by areas of friction and by rubbing of shoes or something against the skin and uh, bony areas and uh, it can lead to sort of areas of frictional irritation so the achilles tendon appears normal, uh, normal fibula pattern, no evidence of tendinopathy or tendon tears. Um, so, so the conclusion here would be um, adventitious bursitis, um, possibly because of uh, constant friction. And um, adventitious bursa are bursa that develop later in life, usually because of irritation to uh, caused by non-supportive shoes, sudden increase in activity trauma, being overweight and also linked with connective tissue disorders. 
So quite unusual case, but again shows linking with history it can be quite useful. The final case. Um, so this is an uh, inactive person, middle-aged, slightly overweight, uh, diabetic patient. He went on holidays a year ago, and he started a bit of swelling at the base of the Achilles tendon. Uh, it's became a bit more firm and slightly discolored. So not a clear diagnosis. So uh, was sent to the clinic. So let's have a look. When we have a look, this is quite um, distinct here, as you can see on the insertion superficial to the Achilles insertion, there is a hypoechoic lesion with posterior acoustic enhancement, sort of measuring around 10 millimeters by 12 millimeters. The location is consistent with um, subcutaneous calcaneal bursa. Um, so I'll put that in both axes, both in long axis as well as in short axis. There are two sort of bursa mainly around the Achilles tendon. One is the mostly in commonly known as the retrocalcaneal bursa, which is sort of deep underneath, but you also get a subcutaneous calcaneal bursa, more uh, superficial to the Achilles tendon. So you can see it's pretty much on the top, um, and that uh, corresponds uh, to the area of patient symptoms. So that matches with the subcutaneous calcaneal bursa. So three interesting cases, and uh, my report would be is as I mentioned, subcutaneous calcaneal bursa. I would measure it because there is posterior acoustic in man enhancement. It sort of goes with the cystic lesion, and um, it's not really a pathology of the tendon, more a superficial issue, unlikely to respond with loading or other issues. So, in conclusion, might be useful to look into few uh, literature relevant to scanning in the Achilles tendon. So this is an interesting case, uh, you know, case control study from Spain, I think looking into comparisons of uh, ultrasound of patients with Achilles tendon uh, with or without uh, um, tendinopathy. And what they found, uh, not surpri no surprise here, was patients with Achilles tendon uh, tendinopathy had increased thickness, uh, which is something which we see in chronic tendinopathy. So that increased thickness and hypoechoic features are quite consistent with chronic tendinopathy. Uh, this is an interesting, uh, this is a quite a useful uh, article looking into the technique. So what is the standard technique which you would use with the patient with the Achilles tendon? So generally in prone, you use a high frequency uh, linear transducer. Um, look with all tendons you want to assess in two planes, long axis and short axis. Good practice to look a bit more proximally, look at the calf muscle to look for any tear at the myotonous junction, especially medial calf and also look at vascularity and also looking at the insertion and also looking for retrocalcaneal bursa. So this is sort of the ch similar checklist which I used. So that is something which you would do in a routine examination. Even if you don't scan, this might be something you want to look in the report and look for all these factors which uh, will be mentioned in a standardized report. So in conclusion, so what are the things you would normally see? If, so you've got a normal Achilles tendon which you might not never see because there's no point, they might not even need to come there, but just useful to look at what a normal Achilles looks like. And then extremely common presentation of mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy, all the features which I mentioned, uh, thickened hyperechoic, uh, loss of fibril pattern, might be calcification and there might be uh, um, increased vascularity. This one, insertion of Achilles tendinopathy can be difficult to treat um, and here you can see a bit of calcification there at the insertion, um, increased vascularity. When somebody comes with insertion like Achilles tendinopathy, it raises a high suspicion of inflammatory pathology like psoriasis or other um, spondyloarthropathy cases because there's a link there. So it's looking at the bigger picture than just not mechanical causes. So this is your general normal sonographic appearance. Uh, of a normal Achilles tendon, a mid-portion Achilles tendon, and an insertion Achilles. Obviously, the cases which I've discussed are not so common, like the subcalcaneal uh, superficial bursa or the adventitial bursa. So that's where ultrasound is extremely useful because clinically it can be very difficult to differentiate uh, between all these structures. Um, and if they're not responding to conservative management, then it might be useful. So for me, MSK ultrasound is an extension of clinical assessment, useful for differential diagnosis. 
guides further management and also can improve patient compliance and buy-in. And definitely I see it as uh, an important part of future of MSK practice uh, to help both the patients and the clinician. So those are my contact details. Hope you find that um, useful and um, please leave your comments. And um, I might be doing future cases uh, looking into clinical relevance of a diagnostic um, uh, ultrasound in uh, MSK presentation. Thank you.